Good morning. First of all, I thank the AIS organizers, Dr. Lalit Verma, for asking us to ha have this session. And uh, it has been so nicely put forward. You can al already see it was a wonderful talk by Dr. Abjit. So I thank, like to thank Mukesh for beautifully bringing out this program. So there are so many things, but we just decided we'll just, because we got only seven minutes, we decided we'll keep up only seven commandments, though there are always, it's nice to have ten commandments. So commandment one in pediatric oculoplastic cases is monitor vision closely in children with ptosis. As soon as you see the children, there's no necessary that you ha necessity that you have to operate. But you have to prevent amblyopia. We cannot afford to lose vision for a child with ptosis. Earlier, about 20 years back, we were advocating school going age, four and a half, five years. But these days, we operate much earlier. The most important thing is to ask the parents to monitor the child's progress, take serial photographs, and now with these cell phones, it's so much more easier. Of course, in Marcus gun phenomenon, the vision is always spared. So most of the times it is spared, you can afford to wait and correct much later. Commandment two, early expansion of the socket is a must to prevent socket contraction. I have started my earliest is day four, but you can, if necessary, and if you see the child on the new, on the day the child is born, you can start even on day one. You have tiny little conformers. You can just put that inside. Earlier we were having all these custom made uh, kind of expanders. We used to even use desperately muscle, uh, lid retraction, uh, lid retractors and what not, the wire retractors, speculums. But uh, I think the small size conformers are the best. So you can see that one half of the face can be affected. Uh, the whole, uh, the, the appearance can be changed uh, because of this problem. So it's better to start early, it's, there is no need to wait. So otherwise, when during marriageable age, they come with for phonics formation and more severe cases. Thank God we're not seeing, seeing the radiation cases now. But whatever it is, conformer is a must, early expansion. Commandment three, start intravenous antibiotics for suspected orbital cellulitis. Please admit them if necessary. And every child needs an imaging. Don't wait. It's because something else may be there, something more sinister or there may be a superior ophthalmic dilatation. The, the infection may be spreading towards the cavernous sinus. And most important of all, please rule out a subperiosteal abscess as you see here. Because this starts acting like a tight compartment. So what we call as a compartment syndrome and it is very important to relieve this collection as early as possible. So if the child by the second day is not responding to IV antibiotics, it's better to take up for surgery and generally I like to take the help of an ENT surgeon to try as much to correct it. Otherwise, you, along with the FES, natural draining through the normal passages, we may have to make an additional cut wherever the pus is collected to drain the uh, orbit. Suspected fungal infection in immunocompromised cases is also very important. This child had a, uh, was undergoing renal dialysis. This 17-year-old, 16-year-old uh, boy had uh, mucomycosis because he was not responding to the IV antibiotics and he turned out to be a juvenile diabetic. In commandment four, it's very important to elicit a history in cases of suspected trauma in children or frank trauma because many a time children will be very scared they won't they won't be forthcoming with the history so we have to suspect so this child we almost thought it was some kind of a tumor but then we saw it was a nicely organized hematoma and when it's frank hematoma and you're sure of it and with the imaging you don't have to necessarily intervene immediately if the parents are not very willing because they're always scared of GA you can wait for a day or two and then wait before you uh, d drain the blood because it's always a little scary because if there is some compromise to some blood vessel there you can have a torrential bleed on the table so the important aspect is to take care of the edema and you know in children all these fractures behave like green stick fr fractures elsewhere so even very severe trauma wait for the neurosurgeons to give their opinion and you can patiently wait for about three to four days or even five days before you do an evaluation under anesthesia to make sure that everything is all right, especially the posterior segment. 
Of course, once the edema decreases, you can also do a, a B scan to make sure there is no compromise to the anterior part of the eye. Blowout fracture in children, as I just mentioned, they just behave like green stick fractures, falling off from a crib, etc. It's better to wait. Uh, you can give them antibiotics if there's too much of collection within the sinuses. Otherwise, just some conservative anti-edema measures will work wonders. Commandment 5. Common things common. Think of the commonest thing. See, this is not having all the telltale signs of a hemangioma, but on a imaging it was so. This is after post-tricot injection, because these days we are using propranolol. Again, when there is, you see such tumors on the fusion line, you can, you can do, you can easily say it's dermoid. And one important thing is, tumors such as rhabdomyosarcoma arise from the sinuses, especially the ethmoid sinuses. The alveolar type and the embryonal type especially. So you have to keep this in mind. You, have not, you should not straight away conclude this is orbital cellulitis. And beware of masquerades. In this case, I almost thought I was dealing with a tumor, but it turned out to be an infection. So, and vice versa. Cysticercosis, of course, the classic scolex you can pick up. And sometimes you can see the scolex itself on clinical evaluation. Thorough clinical evaluation is a must, as in this case. See, they may have some scalp lesions, lesions elsewhere in, in hemangioma. Lymphangioma, usually the whole cheek is involved. Palatal lesions may be present. This child had tuberculosis. This was detected after draining the pus. Simple manto confirmed the diagnosis along with the X-ray chest. Neurofibromatosis, kefiole spots. Sometimes, like thyroid orbitopathy, they mimic. All muscles may be uniformly enlarged, not the Coca-Cola sign. Reactive lymphoid hyperplasia, very common in children after a bout of viral infection. See, cervical nodes and rest of axillary nodes and many other nodes can be involved. This is thyroid malignancy along with eye signs, she has a goiter. And be patient. First, try the conservative treatment. Even I, I get to see these cases very often. Just simple massage will clear it. You don't have to immediately uh, incise and drain because most of the time the fluid collected there is sterile. You don't, unless it's badly infected. Even collisions, just conservative treatment. How long, how many times can you subject the child to general anesthesia, incision and drainage? So the lesser you do is always better. This child was suspected to have some orbital inflammation. You see radio frequency cautery used here, a lot of chopping. So bad, lag of film is after. And then repeatedly, this child is from Coimbatore, keeps coming for corneal infection and inflammation. Okay? So lesser, the better. Thank you very much.